And for our top international story this hour, we bring you an update on the call to end arms sales to Saudi Arabia, an effort which has found new breath since the details of the murder of Saudi writer Jamal Khashoggi first emerged earlier this month. On Thursday, the kingdom's attorney general said intelligence received from Turkey suggests the killing was indeed premeditated, changing the official Saudi line on a story yet again. We had in question thought now would be a good time to break down how some of Saudi's key arms dealers are responding to news of the journalist's murder. This week, German Chancellor Angela Merkel declared arms sales from her country to Saudi Arabia, quote, can't take place as a result of the news. First of all, we denounce this case in all seriousness. That's what we made clear yesterday as well. Secondly, there is an urgent need for clarification. It is still not on the table. And those responsible are still not being held accountable. Thirdly, I agree with all those who say that, which is already so limited, as far as arms exports are concerned, those can't take place in the current situation. And fourthly, we will speak further on an international level about reactions. However, not all leaders have taken this position, most notably those from Canada, France, Spain and the United States. Let's start with Canada, where Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said his nation is, quote, considering an end to arms sales, however, offered no assurances that such a decision would be made. What's more, Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Christia Freeland was, in fact, asked why Ottawa is going ahead with these deals, to which she replied, quote, Jamal Khashoggi's death is a very serious, grave incident in Canada's eyes. We still have many questions about this incident. The explanations are not credible and they are not sufficient. Still, Friedland's answer was satisfactory when compared to French President Emmanuel Macron's reply when he was asked by reporters if he would follow in the footsteps of his German counterpart. It's not because a leader makes a statement that I am forced to react to it. So I won't answer that question. If the subjects of this event are not interesting to you, do not come. But this is not a press conference to react to the German Chancellor. This has nothing to do with this visit, nothing. So I won't answer. But perhaps no reaction comes close to the Spanish government's move to actually defeat a motion in Parliament calling on Madrid to freeze arms agreements with Riyadh. This week, Spain's socialist government partnered with the opposition to do just that. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez defended the decision. Gentlemen, as president of the government, I defend the interests of Spain. I assume international obligations, as in this case and in other areas too, and I don't look back only forward. I understand having a narrow vision looking to create artificial conflicts. I cannot allow us to carry on down this path. With the responsibility that's been invested in me, I must conciliate interests from a perspective that others don't have because of the positions they are in. And then finally, there's U.S. President Donald Trump, who's promised, quote, severe consequences if Saudi is proven responsible for Khashoggi's murder. However, he had this to say on the question of arms contracts. I worked very hard to get the order for the military. It's $110 billion. I believe it's the largest order ever made. It's 450,000 jobs. It's the best equipment in the world. But if they don't buy it from us, they're going to buy it from Russia, or they're going to buy it from China, or they're going to buy it from other countries. With the sale of arms to Saudi Arabia in question, I spoke earlier today with Medea Benjamin. She's with Code Pink, Women for Peace, and author of the book Kingdom of the Unjust, behind the U.S.-Saudi connection. Medea, do you believe any consequences will come as a result of Saudi's latest admission that the killing of Khashoggi was in fact premeditated? Or do you think the kingdom will be able to blame this on a few scapegoats and continue on with business as usual? Well, certainly the kingdom will try to do this, and uh, the uh, countries that are in the business of selling weapons to Saudi Arabia will be only too happy to try to help with the cover-up. But there are uh, many organizations, human rights groups, as well as other governments that are demanding real answers. The UN calling for an investigation. Uh, there are senators who have called on the U.S. government to ask, uh, what information did you have before this? Um, so I don't think they'll be able to just uh, push this under the rug and continue with business as usual because there are too many of us demanding real answers.
I should point out you are in fact doing that right now. You're located in front of the Saudi embassy where you've been protesting and demanding uh, answers and action all morning. All of the leaders I mentioned in this opener, other than President Donald Trump, are considered quite liberal. There's a sort of even cult obsession with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, for example, in an effort to brand him as a cultural icon. Do you think this ordeal has exposed anything about these leaders? I think it has exposed the hypocrisy of the Western democracies that have been uh, building economies that are dependent on weapon sales to repressive governments like the Saudi government. The Canadian uh, uh, officials are saying that they can't stop the weapon sales because there will be a billion dollars in penalties. The Spanish are saying they can't stop the weapon sales because uh, the workers are protesting they want to keep their jobs. So I think it's just pretty amazing how um, we are in this day and age able to say that our Western democracies and Canada, uh, for example, are dependent on these uh, weapon sales for the jobs. What does that say about the kind of economies we created? Uh, and of course, what does it say about the morality of the leaders we have? I want to give you a chance to comment on the double standard we've witnessed in the corporate press, which only now started to raise this issue of an arms freeze rather than forcing it any time over the last three and a half years as Saudi was using those weapons to carry out a brutal war in Yemen. Why has this been the case? Well, it's unfortunate that the mainstream media hasn't cared about the constant killing of civilians in Yemen or the incredible famine. When they have shown some pictures, we see the skinny little bodies of these children, and yet um, there has not been an outcry in the media to say um, what about the responsibility of the Western countries in the sale of these weapons. Uh, it took the murder, the brutal murder, of one journalist who worked for the Washington Post to bring that out. And it is quite interesting to see how Donald Trump uh, has been uh, so uh, touting the weapon sales and keeps inflating the figures in terms of the amount of weapons, the amount of jobs this is, um, all in a effort to say that it is more important for us to keep selling these weapons than it is to demand accountability for Jamal Khashoggi, but even more so. Uh, they never talk about the need to stop the brutal um, killing of civilians that is happening on a regular basis in Yemen and the famine uh, that the Yemeni people are facing. Very briefly, Medea, how can concerned citizens put pressure on their governments to end these sales? Well, we all need to put pressure. In the United States, there are two bills, one in the House and one in the Congress, that will be coming up for a vote right after the midterm elections. And we see in the other Western countries that there are people who are out there um, pressuring their governments to stop these weapon sales. Uh, our governments, unfortunately, are more concerned about the interests, the profits of the weapons manufacturers. So we, the people, have to demand that they listen to us, and we have to demand that our Congress uh, stops allowing the government to keep approving these weapon sales. Medea Benjamin of Code Pink, Women for Peace, always a pleasure to talk to you. She's there at the Saudi Embassy in Washington, D.C. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.